This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, it's all about this guitar today. You saw me unboxing a bunch of new Faisleys last week. Um, and this is one of them. This is the Faisley Sunset Series Tortoise guitar. £187 worth of thin line Telecaster copy. Um, there's a lot to like about this guitar and a lot to talk about. And there's maybe one thing that is a little troubling. And we'll get to all of that right after we've heard what this guitar sounds like in a mix. And as usual, you'll find a full tab for that piece of music in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track for you to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address link in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are also downstairs in the description. Um, I'll put a, a link to the full spec for this guitar uh, down there as well, uh, but the, basically the headline figures, we have a chambered poplar body, we have a roasted maple neck and fretboard, um, we have Faisley branded tuners, a Graftec Tusk nut, uh, a Wilkinson bridge, no information on what the pickups are, um, I, I, I literally do not know, but they sounded okay in that uh, in that little demo there. Um, you know, so for under two hundred pounds, you know, roasted maple, tusk nut, Wilkinson bridge, you know, price up those parts. Um, 
and uh, and see what, uh, what 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 you'd have to pay to buy them individually. You know, if you were building like a parts caster or something like that, and um, you know, it's you you're probably going to be spending more than the price of this guitar. Um, you know, so what's the deal with roasted maple anyway? We're seeing a lot more guitars with it now, and I did get a question the other day about uh, you know why is this kind of the, the current in thing? Um, well, basically, wood has a certain amount of moisture in it, and as it dries out, things like fret sprout can occur where the neck shrinks, uh, or the fretboard maybe shrinks, and the edges of the frets will stick out. Uh, and as the wood kind of uh, dehydrates and um, you know becomes drier, things can shift. Things can you know kind of move out of shape a little bit. But uh, roasted, it's actually more kind of like a baking process, uh, where they, they they put the wood into you know kind of a I don't know if it's an oven or a heat chamber of some kind, and basically dry all the moisture out of it. So you're never going to have that issue of of the wood you know be kind of becoming unstable um as um as time goes on that's my understanding of it at least um i did get um you know a comment saying oh these guitars they're so cheap because they're made from wood which is still wet well that's the whole point of uh, doing the roasted maple thing. I mean, I was I, for for reasons that will become apparent as as this video goes on. I was uh, looking on eBay uh, last night to see how much a roasted maple neck is going to cost you uh, if you were to buy one retail, and you know anywhere between seventy five and 120 pounds for a roasted maple neck on its own and this guitar costs 187 pounds so you get the point that i'm making there is a lot of guitar going on here for the money that you're paying for 187 pounds um i enjoyed playing this guitar um it's got a pleasing neck profile and you know it's maybe the action's a little bit high but we'll come to that again in a moment let's while we're talking about neck profiles and stuff have a look at some uh, stats for this guitar you can see they're absolutely light as a feather 2.74 kilos with a nut width of absolutely bang on 42 millimeters which is a bit unusual why i say that is i get guitars in here all the time where you know it's specified as a 42 millimeter nut and you measure it and it's 41.8 or 42.1 or something like that um but this is absolutely bang on 42 millimeters as you can see there fretboard radius of 12 inches there's the first and 12th fret neck profiles uh, DC pickup readings uh, on the bridge we've got 5.78k neck is 4.71 and in the middle it's 2.61k so a very kind of vintage voiced set of pickup readings that um, in that demo there oh I meant to mention what settings I was using yes indeed uh, in that demo that you heard earlier the clean sounds were the clean channel on the blue guitar amp one um, that was for both the uh, the strummy chords and the uh, the clean lead part the um the kind of crunchy power chordy stuff was the same amp uh, but on the vintage channel which has a very kind of plexi-ish sort of tone and then usually for the kind of high again lead stuff what i tend to do is just use that setting but with um, a pedal in front of it but it was just i don't know it was going to be a bit too high gain to be in keeping with this guitar so what i did was i went to uh just a, a slightly higher gain channel on the amp the classic channel which is a bit more of a jcm 800 kind of sound um <clears throat> And, you know, I think that these pickups here, these unspecified uh, pickups, did a pretty good job of still sounding like, you know, this style of guitar throughout all of those different gain changes. The volume control on the guitar is an important thing for me. I like to use it to control uh, how much... Um, grit and fur around the edges there is on the sound now that uh, clean channel on the blue guitar amp one let's have a look at it again with those settings there um that was fine as you saw it there with the guitar's volume on full for the um, for the the kind of clean lead parts but the kind of strummy chords that i started off on um it was just a little bit too gritty sounding so does the volume control clean it up without making it sound like it's, you know, kind of all muddy and muffled? Well, yes, it did. So the volume control is uh, fully functional on this guitar. It's not just there for decoration, which is something that you find on a lot of guitars, sad to say. Um, so 
as I say, I enjoyed playing this guitar. Um, I had fun with it, and I'm kind of on the cusp of thinking about maybe grabbing one of these and maybe modding it a little bit, new tuners, and throw some Tone Rider pickups into it just to kind of, because I'm a big fan of those pickups, change the pots and stuff. There is, however, one thing that is making me think, yeah, not such a good idea. And that is to do with the action on this guitar. The reason why the action is a little bit on the high side, um, I finally dug out uh, my old uh, proper string height ruler uh, the other day. Um, I've been having a bit of a tidy up in here, and I found it lurking at the back of a drawer. Um, and the, the action on this guitar on the bass string at the uh, 12th fret is 2.5 millimeters. That's, that's high, frankly. Uh, it's not ridiculously high. Some people would be perfectly happy with that action, but it's it's not to my liking. Um, and, you know, just doing a quick and dirty truss rod measurement like this, you know, there is too much relief in the neck, basically. Um, so, okay, let's adjust the truss rod. And that's where things started to go wrong. Um, the truss rod on this guitar is absolutely jammed solid. It will not move um you can get the the allen key to engage but it just won't shift the truss rod and all it did was i ended up rounding off the end of uh, one of those cheap allen keys that uh, that tends to come with this guitar so i tried um i've got some like better ones like you know was it chrome vanadium or you know proper expensive allen keys and tried that tried one in there and again it just wouldn't budge the truss rod the truss rod on this guitar is non-functional and moreover, um, my fellow YouTuber, uh, Steve Cassidy, if you're not subscribed to his channel, go and check him out. Um, you know, great YouTuber. Um, he had this exact same model from Faisley and found the exact same problem. Uh, so, yes, there's obviously a problem with this, with either, this, well, I would say with this batch of guitars. Um, what I did was I emailed... Uh, my contact he's called rick at bax music and uh, told him about this issue and i'm going to share his reply with you now um i've got it printed out here because that screen's too far away and i can't see it um it says hi john it's a pity but we will need to deal with that and do some research on our side at present i'm looking into the details of our stock models to ensure all is well with those then the next couple of paragraphs that you can see i've pixelated out there that's concerning another matter about one of the other guitars that um that was sent to me and we'll get to that when i'm doing the review of that guitar but if we go to that uh, final paragraph that i've uh, circled there it says first of all i want to make sure that the rest of the stock of these models are okay especially before i send you or steve another model Rest assured that we take this matter very seriously and we thank you for mentioning it to us. So, I mean, that's fair enough. That's that's a good response. Um, you know, reading between the lines, I think what's happened here is that these are new models for Faisley. There has obviously been a new production line being tooled up and set up to make these guitars and teething problems happen. Um, you know, and... I used to work many, many years ago in the late 80s, early 90s, well, from 88 to 91, basically. I used to work in a quality assurance department for a large electronics company. And, um, you know, I know the way that quality assurance and quality control inspections happen. You get a, a container load of widgets into the goods inward department. And, you know, for this many units that have arrived, there is you know, a, a, a kind of specified sam sized sample that you have to take. And that's laid down in like a, a British standard uh, or you back in the, back in those days, I don't know what it is now, but it was laid down by a, a specified uh, British standard um, manual that, you know, you would kind of take this many samples and then you would pass the whole batch as uh, being, you know, if, if all of those samples passed, the whole batch had passed. Um, and so it's it's conceivable that you know a few bad apples have slipped through, uh, and hence why this guitar here, which has a non-functioning truss rod, has a quality control pass sticker on it. So the big question is, would I recommend that you get one of these guitars? Well, as I said, it's a lot of guitar for the money. Um, you know, roasted maple and Wilkinson kind of uh, bridge and so on. Good modding platform. 
um, if I get one of these that's certainly what I'll be doing with it um, and you know obviously the, knowing what we know about the, uh, the, the, the broken or non-functioning truss rod that is a big red flag but in fairness to the people at Bax it seems that they are um, taking this matter very very seriously and as I said earlier that kind of batch sampling um, kind of approach that is the standard way of doing quality control checks um, you know lets a few wrong and slip through it seems what they're doing now is going through the entire inventory and uh, weeding out any wrong and so I think you know you are probably going to be in a, in a good place if you decide to order one of these and let's not forget as well that I've had very very good customer service uh, from Bax but then again you know I'm a YouTuber and they're sending me guitars uh, to get them sort of publicized um, you know uh, so you might think well of course they're going to be more attentive to somebody like you but if you don't get that level of customer service ask why do it publicly you know on twittergram or face chat or whatever any of those things that i don't bother with um you know just just kind of call them out and say there's this big fat double chin bald lad in out in the sticks up in north yorkshire who um you know uh, got better customer service than i'm doing why is that you know kind of call them out on it and uh, you know as i say i've always had good customer relations with them even before they were sending me out stuff to uh, to review so it seems like the problem is in the process of being uh, eradicated and being fixed so i think you should be okay let me know if you're not you know if you have one of if you order one of these guitars and it turns up with the issues that that i've identified then get in touch and um you know you know grguitartuition at gmail.com leave a comment below this video or use the contact form on my website addresses at the top of the screen there uh link in the description just get in touch and let me know um as i said hopefully this is now a matter that is uh, being put to bed and there you have it folks that is my review of the Faisley Sunset Series tortoise guitar um, I really rather like it despite it's rather um, you know kind of fatal flaw that it has uh, that's the review make of it what you will hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so why not drop me a like as well while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and a whole range of other things great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.